okay so in the previous video we have set up our project and in this video let's start building our project by creating the navbar so in the source folder i'm going to create a new folder called components inside that i'm going to create a file called navbar.js So like so we have this components folder inside that we have this navbar folder so let's create a basic component here so we're going to say export default function and the name of our function will be navbar and it have to return some html so return for now let's just return a paragraph element and let's say navbar like so and in the app component we are going to import our navbar so we're going to say import and we're going to import navbar from components slash navbar and let's use that navbar in our return here so we're going to use navbar like so save and it says navbar okay so our component is working so here we're going to use a div instead so we're going to say div and the div will have a class name of navbar so we're going to say navbar Let's copy the class and go to our index.scss. So here we're going to say target our navbar. And let's say this will have a height of 55 pixels. So 55 pixel. And just so that we can see it, let's give it a background color of red for now. So background color of red. This is how much height it will take okay we, we don't want a background color instead we want a box shadow but for the color of our box shadow we don't want to use a fixed color here that is because we know our app will have multiple themes and multiple primary colors so same color of box shadow may not look good in all cases so for all the colors and other variables we're going to create some css variables so let me paste them here so here i have created some variables so you can go through them so we're first selecting our root and here we're creating a background color variable and setting that to white and then we're also creating a variable called background light which will be a little lighter than our main background color but in case of white theme both of them are going to be same but in case of dark theme when we create our dark theme the background color will be dark and the background light will be a little bit lighter and this is the box shadow color and this is our primary color this is the pinkish color and then for the white theme our text color is this dark color and the text light will also be a little bit lighter than the original text color like so and the font size we are setting this to 16 pixel and we are also setting the animation speed to 1 this animation speed will control how how fast or how slow our animation should run okay so now first let's target our body and here we are simply going to say font size and font size will be simply our font size variable so we are going to say var inside that we are going to say font size like so ok so now we can see our navbar so let's say our navbar will have some box shadow so we are going to say box the shadow and let's say the x axis will be 0 pixel and the y can be let's say 3 pixel and the blur will be let's say 6 pixel and the color will be our shadow color and we are also going to say our background color will be the background color and the color will be text color so dash color equals to dash dash text color like so save it and here now we can see this box shadow okay let's add some items to our navbar so here first we're going to create a a tag so a and for now the href will be hashtag later on we'll be replacing all the a tags with a router link so for now let's just say hashtag exclamation mark and here we're going to say food is hub And I am also going to wrap this O's in a span so we can style them separately. So let's say span. And we are going to close it here. Like so. So this is how this looks like. So after that we are going to have some router links. So we are going to create an, another div with a class of let's say nav links. Like so. Let's close it. So inside that we again can have some a text. So we are going to have a about page we're going to have a home actually we don't need about another one is recipes and another one is settings save and this is how they looks like so let's style them make them prettier so let's say our navbar will have a display of flex so we're going to say display flex we're going to say justify content to space between and align items to center save it 
and this is how they looks like we also want some space on the left and right side but for that we are going to give our navbar another class the class will be container and let's create that class so let's say dot container for now let's just say this will have a padding let's say padding block so let's say padding block let's say 20 viewport width let's see how that looks okay it should be padding inline sorry not padding block so padding inline so padding block is the top and bo bottom and padding inline is left and right save so now we have this much padding on the left and right let's change it to let's say 15 so later on we'll be adding media queries to make it responsive so the padding will be good in all screen sizes but for now 15 viewport width should be good enough and let's say we also want to use some google fonts so let's say fonts.google.com so fonts.google.com and let's say we want to use roboto so i'm going to select roboto let me expand my window so we're selecting the 100 so you can just click to select or deselect i have selected the thin 100 i've selected the light 300 i've selected the 400 the 500 and 700 and 900 also so you can select them after that you'll see the generated code so all you have to do is copy this link so control c and then in our project let me open up my sidebar by typing control b inside that you, in the public folder we have this index.html and here we have to paste them so let's say we are going to paste them here and we can fix the indentation like so save them that's all and then in the css we simply have to specify a font family so here we already have this example let's copy this let's go to our index.scss in the body we're going to say body will have a font family of roboto and as backup we're saying sans serif so if roboto for some reason is not available sans serif will be applied save and now our font family has been changed to roboto okay okay let's keep this one a class so let's go to our let me close this and let's go to our navbar and this one let's give it a class name so class name of let's say logo like so copy this control c control s here since we are using sas we can say dot and then the logo inside that since we are using sas we can nest it okay so for this one let's say the font size so font dash size font size will be let's say 1.2 em since we said 1.2 em we are using the em unit here in that way in javascript if you were to change our font size to so let's say 20 pixel as you can see this also becomes bigger if we make it 10 this also becomes smaller so by changing the font size variable we'll be able to change all the font size of our page if we use em okay let's also say the font weight will be bold let's see how that looks Oh, let's say bolder now let's ch change the color to our primary color save we're going to say the text decoration to none to remove the underline so text decoration will be none actually not just here i'm going to cut this out so control x and let's target a text separately so a and we're going to say text decoration to none so none of our a text should have any underline so and actually let's make it 1.5 em and let's target the span inside the logo so if you remember we have wrapped our o's inside span so we can target those span and for those let's say the color will be text color so text dash color and now these o's are black which is our text color okay let's also add a little bit of text shadow so we're going to say text dash shadow let's say zero pixel from the x-axis one pixel from the y-axis three pixel for the blur and the color will be our shadow color let me close the sidebar save so we have just a little bit of shadow and now let's see let me bring it here so in the navbar we have this nav links so let's target them so our nav links let's target the a inside them so let's say they will have some margin on the left so margin left of let's say 1 em and yeah 1 em should be good enough let's say they will have a color of text light so color equals to text dash light save this is how they looks like let's also say the letter spacing so letter spacing let's say one pixel save it 
let me close this one and i'm also going to say they will have a text transform of uppercase so text transform uppercase okay now in our original project if i go back as you can see when you hover on them we have this pink underline let's see how we can make that so for that we're going to use the before element so we're going to say and colon colon before so if i say and and we'll basically target this this one the parent and then we're going to say colon colon before which is same as saying a colon colon before and here let's say content equal be nothing so content equals to an empty string this will have a display of block so display of block let's give it a height of let's say 10 pixel the width will be 100 percent so width equals to 100 percent and background color will be our primary color so background color equals to primary color save it and this is how they looks like so this is not what we want so let's say our ace will have a position of relative so position relative save okay let's make it inline block that would be more convenient so inline dash block like so okay now let's also say they will have a position of absolute so position of absolute and the top and the bottom will be negative 10 pixel and left will be zero save and this is how they looks like okay let's change the width height let's say 5 pixel and make this 5 negative 5 as well actually let's make it 3 I think 3 would be better so 3 pixel for the height and yeah 3 pixels should be pretty close to what we have and I think we also have a letter spacing of 2 pixel so let's make it 2 like so and by default they will have a transform so transform of scale x to zero so we won't be able to see them but we're also going to say and colon hover so and colon hover colon colon before when we hover on them then the before element should have a transform of scale to one and now when we hover on them we get this underline let's also say our a tag they will have some transition so we're going to say transition to transform and then for the transform duration instead of simply saying 0.5 second we're going to use the calc function so we're going to say calc and then we're going to say var dash dash animation speed time 0.5 seconds so animation speed is currently 1 so 0.5 times 1 is still 0.5 so our animation speed will be 0.5 save it and now if you hover as you can see they, they animates okay let's make it let's say 0 0.3 actually let's try 0 0.2 and yeah 0 0.2 should be good enough but now if our animation speed was some bigger number let's say 3 now they takes more time and if our animation speed was let's say some smaller number like 0.1 and now the animation occurs faster so this is the benefit of using variables here by changing the variable we can change the behavior of our page okay so we're also going to have a active so we are going to say n dot active so when they have a when our a tags have a class of active the color will be the primary color so color equals to primary color like so so now in our navbar if for example one of our a tags have a class list of active so class name of active the color of them will be the primary color and let's say they will also have a font weight of bold so we're going to say font weight of bold save like so so the active class will be later on added using the javascript or in react by looking at our page router link so if we are in home page the home will have a class list of active if we were in the recipes page this will have a class list of active but for now let's remove them and yeah this should be all for this this tutorial in the next video what we are going to do is if i now make the, our screen smaller as you can see we get this hamburger icon and if we click on it it becomes a cross or a x this is what we are going to be building in our next video we are going to be making from scratch we won't be using any icons or svg it will be made using just three divs so i hope you are excited for that one so subscribe and leave a like and i'll see you next time